If you're going to earn Allah's favor, do what he tells you. The primary thing are the five uh, pillars of Islam. So you recite the Shahada, which is the proclamation that you are a Muslim. La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. There is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger. That's number one. Number two is to pray the five daily prayers. Every single day you recite these memorized prayers. Number three is to fast. Fast every um, year during the month of Ramadan. Four is to pay the alms. You're supposed to pay a certain amount of alms called zakat. And lastly is the hajj, which just happened, the pilgrimage you're supposed to take at one point in your life. Just do it. Allah has told you to do yeah, it. You submit yeah, and you do yeah. it. But then there's also these other rules, again, through the hadith that you're supposed yes. to follow in order to be a good Muslim. And the more you do good deeds, the more you submit to Allah, the better your, your weights are in favor of your good judgment on, on the day of judgment. Okay. When we see the headlines of the brutality and the atrocities being committed uh, by ISIS in, in the Middle East, unspeakable horrors, um, is that a natural outflow of pursuing the teachings of the Quran, or is it a perversion of the Quran? And this, is a, this is a fascinating question. Um, there's a lot of questions that come up here. Uh, when people say Islam is a religion of peace, I think the best that they can mean is that there are Muslims who honestly follow Islam, who honestly believe it is a peaceful religion. And I'll agree with that. That is the case. That's what I was taught. My parents had taught me to live a peaceful form of Islam. They said that the jihad had been abrogated, had been canceled uh, by peace. Um, but when you take a look at what Islam is historically, if you define Islam as that religious system which the Muhammad in the pages of history left behind, there's no question that it's violence. So Islam is something that's very oral. It's a religion that's taught to you orally. Like I said, people don't generally pick up the Quran and study it for themselves. They receive it orally from their teachers or from their parents. That's how they learn Islam. Well, when you do that, when you teach something orally, you're by definition teaching them something selectively. You're, you're not giving them the whole story. And so when David and I started investigating how to prove whether Islam or Christianity was true, and we turned to the Muslim faith, I started reading the early stories of Muhammad's life for myself, mm -hmm. instead of just receiving the stories, reading from you know, beginning to the end. Doing your own investigation. And that's when I came across yeah. all these stories that no one had shared with me before. Things that made me think, why am I following this man? Wow. Uh, everything that I had heard up until then had been very positive, but now I'm hearing stories about you know, him being uh, bewitched, him uh, beheading hundreds of people on the same day, uh, him doing, you know, treating women in certain ways, nothing that I'd ever heard before.